So I said we've gone from individualism to a beginning sense of the common good, of the recognition we are part of systems. It's been in the scientific and philosophical literature. I mean, it's Bateson, it's all these people. But that we could collectively, I mean, if you think of the collective, the German collective consciousness that dealt with through much denial what was being done to the Jews and others. Is that different from our collective denial that allowed us to idolize and place on our altars people like Donald Trump when we knew that the permanent underclass was being created because we could see it around us but we were busy denying what we were seeing. We had Dynasty and we had Dallas. And then we had an increasing number of people who are the ocean that spreads out into the world over that Mexican border and elsewhere of those who haven't. And how much denial, how much closing of your compassionate heart must it take to continue to play the game of King of the Mountain, what's in it for me? And each of us gets the most we can for ourselves. Trickling down, of course, is the assumption that once we have enough for ourselves, we will then create ways to share it with everybody. Out of our beneficence, or out of our obligation, perhaps. That's another level of consciousness. And it's why Chuck's involvement with Social Venture Network, his creation of it, is an absolutely exquisite moment of shifting mythology that Ben and Jerry and Anita Roddick, Wayne Selby from Calvert Fund, and all these wonderful people who are playing with the edge of saying, business has a social responsibility for the common good. Wait until television gets that kind of group going. We're shifting myths from thinking that we were educated for facts to the recognition that we are educated regarding process, not knowledge. Where to find it, like computers. You don't have to know it anymore, you just have to know where to find it. But also, we are beginning to recognize the value of how our mind works, of studying how our mind works, which is meditation. Because it's sneaking into the culture through stress reduction, basically. And stress is a product of the fear that exists in an unstable situation in which everybody in the situation is caught in their own separateness and has lost the balance that they are part of systems. We had a myth that you chose your career when you were 12, 14, 16, and then you saw it through. It is now true that the present person in our society should expect to have five career changes in a lifetime. So retraining is no longer something for losers, it's something for winners. It's how quickly you get retrained for your next round. Because you realize you're in an economy that's like a floating crap game. And you've just got to stay very loose as to how you're going to play it. I think we've, we're in an interesting transition period because of the bomb from the myth that war is a solution, a political solution, to recognizing that it is not, that diplomacy is the only strategy, and that unless you have a win-win situation, nobody wins. We're seeing how when somebody wins, somebody loses, and when somebody loses, there they are, the Croats, the Serbs, and the Bosnians. Everybody feels they lost, and now they're going to win. But really, in history, there can be no winners and losers, because we're all in it together. But notice how little compassion there is across those borders between the Muslims and the Christians, the Jews and the Arabs, the Palestinians the inner city and the suburbs. We had an interesting myth that I had in my history books about 1492 and the great benefit of Columbus discovering America. 
I think we have matured with our mythic structures. I now feel that we are looking for a way to make an apology for the fact that we built our system on genocide. And we are as culpable as Hitler ever was for what we have done as a people. And feel how deep the justifications were in the culture. John Wayne. This is an older one, but we had the myth that we were a, a moral force in the world. And then we had the Vietnam War and we realized how fallible our systems were. That our fallible meaning that we were caught in acts that were not harmonious with our deepest wisdom. That's the pain of it. The pain for each of you is to be living your life in a way that is not harmonious with your deepest wisdom. And I would say that's my pain. And that ever since 1961 when I took mushrooms, Ever since that moment, I have recognized that I have a deep, deep wisdom, a connection to the universe that is at home and true and at one, and that my separateness is just my separateness, and that the systems I am part of are fallible systems, and they are dissonant from the way my heart says. My heart says there is justice. My heart says there is compassion, because that is what my heart is. It's a just and compassionate entity, and so is yours. And we armor them with rationalization to deal with the fact that we are acting in ways that are not just and they are not compassionate. And I figure my whole life has been some an attempt to work with the dis dissonance and the attempt to integrate my inner truth with the way I live. And it's very, very fascinating as a journey. Fascinating as a journey.